Romero steps up right footed and coolly places it. Jigalai might get a strike on it, and he's buried it. And that's the moment of magic. Beautiful September weather in Edmonton, gorgeous blue skies, and the fans really enjoying these late summer days in the capital of Alberta, FC Edmonton, back at home, Clark Stadium today, where they're developing uh, quite an unbeaten run as well, one of the toughest teams to break down in the league. Good afternoon, I'm Gareth Hampshire, alongside Steve Sandor. 5-1-1 draws in a row, though, for the Eddies, and Colin Miller wanting them to get to winning ways today. Yeah, definitely a bizarre run of run of form right now to, to, to draw five games by the same score, home and road, no matter the opponent. We did some number crunching this week, and we looked at that to be about 40,000 to one, the odds of a team playing not just five draws in a row, but five 1-1 one, one draws in a row. Let's take a look at the league standings. This game all important today because both teams, Edmonton and Minnesota, are deadlocked on points and a victory for both of them would make a big difference there. You can see them sixth and seventh, eight points respectively. The Cosmos opening up a bit of a gap at the moment on 15 points. Yeah, really a draw here. And you know, that would be what you'd pick considering the form of both teams. Doesn't do either club any good. They need three points. The Cosmos are starting to pull away from the pack and the Rowdies as well. So to keep in touch with those lead teams, need three points today. Colin Miller spoke, to, spoke to earlier this week about the preparation needed for Minnesota and to stop their top striker, Pablo Campos. We know that Minnesota are in a similar situation that we are. They'll be fighting for the three points also. They've got a very talented team. Uh, they've spent some money this off-season on players. They've got arguably the best centre forward in the league, uh, Campos. That will have to be watched. Um, but again, it's about what we do and, and our preparation this week is about how we go about our work. And uh, as you've seen there this morning, very much an attack-minded theme. Uh, and That'll be the difference is can we turn these opportunities into goals? Um, as said before, with the greatest respect to every team in the league, we don't fear anyone. And we've proven that uh, to be unbeaten in six games is, is fantastic in any level of professional football. It's just unfortunate five of those are draws. Well, one of the players getting a run in the team for the Eddies at the moment is Gagan Dosange, and he's been playing well in the midfield. And he feels like the Eddies form is coming right at just the right time. I think we're we're starting to create some chances. We're on the brink of uh, breaking through. I think we're pretty close to to having a big big score coming up soon. So I think we just need to focus a little bit more in front of net. Maybe make that one extra pass, take care of that one extra pass or that extra shot, and just make sure that uh, we're concentrating up there. FC Edmonton looking for a bit more of a killer instinct in front of goal today after five one-one draws. Stay with us. The game against Minnesota is coming up next. FC Edmonton Soccer on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the Fath Group. Building Alberta for more than 50 years. By High Signs. Let's light it up. And by Earthwater, the official water of FC Edmonton. Let's take a look at the starting lineups at Clark Stadium this afternoon. FC Edmonton against Minnesota. Starting in goal again, Lance Parker for the Eddies. A back four of Watson and Proctor in the middle, Rago and Lang out wide as the fullbacks. The midfield four, Nurse and Laverty in the middle, Mirabelli getting a run probably on the left, Osange will probably play down the right, and Fordyce just behind Corey Herzog, probably operating as a lone striker for the Eddies today. And for Minnesota, Campos, the man to watch, there he is, probably a front three for them, Bracanello and Ambersley, the midfield, Malice, Franks, and Ibera, and a back four of Coleman, Diaz, Pitch Coleman, the captain, and Tobin, Matt Van Oko, the goalkeeper for Minnesota. And the goalie matchups, Lance Parker in very good form for FC Edmonton, and Matt Van Oko starting in goal for Minnesota, and we're all set for kickoff at Clark Stadium. Minnesota starting with the three strikers and what looks to be a 4-3-3. 
it's a signal of intent from Manny Lagos that this is going to be uh, a, a game that they want to jump on right away, that the three points is exceptionally important to them. FC Edmonton attacking the goal to our right and immediately trying to put Minnesota under pressure. The Eddies in their all-black home kit. And immediately it's Rago in possession, plays a safe pass back to Proctor. And Proctor will push it out wide to the left. Conditions very nice for a match this afternoon. 19 degrees, little bit of a blowing wind. But very dry and lovely late September weather we've got in Edmonton at the moment. And again, you know, I, I said off the top of the show that the odds of 5-1-1 uh, draws in a row, which is what Edmonton has done, is about 40,000 to 1. And if you're wondering how we arrived at that is, there is a statistical average out there that a 1-1 draw happens about 12% of every soccer game. So it's 12% times 5, or five, you multiply it 5 times. So it's 0 0.12 times 0 0.12 times 0 0.12, and, and so on. Minnesota with the ball in the midfield, uh, trying to get their passing going. Bracalello playing that one back, and it'll go all the way back to the goalkeeper from Connor Tobin. Goal to our right there, Van Okel in the red, and he's uh, cleared one straight up the middle. It's going to bounce, and Rago comes across to make the clearance. Nurse is being uh, marked very strongly there in the middle of the field, but the ball might drop at Laverty. A little bit of a uh, scrappy start, but Minnesota getting the ball out to... Cristiano Diaz. Good little break by Bracalello there, but Nurse caught him with a trailing boot. And the free kick is going to go to Minnesota. See here Minnesota with the big striker of Campos right at the top of the formation here. We'll see if Pitch Colin uh, comes up from the back. Yes, he does to join the attack here. And he takes a position right behind the defense. He's going to come back as a decoy. He's starting off in an offside position. And Parker making the orders to his defense out from goal. It's Malice over the ball, but he leaves it for Bracalello. He's curled it up to the far post, and Chris Nurse just made sure that no one could get to that ball, and out it goes for a goal kick to Lance Parker. Inter interesting uh, set piece there by Minnesota that uh, Pitch Kohler went so far behind the line in offside position. Usually when you see guys do that, it's a bit of a dummy. They start running back towards the line when that kick's about to be taken, so they get close to being an onside. But in that case, Pitch Kohler just stood there and waited for the line to come to him. Uh, risky move, because if that ball touches him first or played through him, that uh, that kick's got to come back, or, or Edmonton's going to get the call on the offside. All ball forward by Lang. Fordyce got a flick on that one, trying to play and go signs. It's over the top of Rago, but he will win possession back for FC Edmonton, trying to play it up the line for Dosange. And it's going to be a throw-in for Minnesota. Diaz with a long throw up the line. Campos trying to get his head on it, doesn't quite connect, and will go out for a goal kick to FC Edmonton. And I say this almost in every broadcast, but you know we know that there's people from around the league that are watching this, or the, the first-time viewer of a FC Edmonton match here at Clark Stadium. You follow the yellow lines, those are the ones that are the soccer lines. It's, it's sometimes it's hard to tell with the white football lines, and there's hope that next year this turf is supposed to is due to be replaced. It's a city-owned facility, but FC Edmonton has been in talks with the city about getting new, a new turf in here that with the removable lines, so that hopefully next year we won't have the football lines when there's a soccer match on. Diaz in the left back position for Minnesota. Dosanj takes that ball away from him, steals it nicely on the edge of the penalty area, and very nearly played in Herzog, but has a throw in for FC Edmonton. One thing Colin Miller has said to me that he really likes about Gagan Dos Sanchez, he's, he's the shortest player on the pitch, but he doesn't play at that height. You see there, he made a challenge, isn't afraid to go in, and uh, you, you look at him, and he, he's, he's, he's a few inches tall, uh, shorter than anyone else on the pitch, yet he's not afraid to make challenges. But a good cross in from the right-hand side there. Van Okel, safe handling from him, gathers it nicely and will bring the ball out to the edge of his own penalty area. No goals so far, no real chances at either end. The home fans trying to get behind the Eddies here. They've got to start winning games to challenge with New York just opening up a slight gap at the top of the table at the moment. 
You see, too, with Edmonton's formation, Dos Anjos was out on the left side last week. He's out on the right side this week with Mirabelli coming back in as a natural left-sided player into the lineup. And that means Neil Halavity moves more into his natural central midfield position. He's been out on the right side the last few weeks. And actually been really successful. Created a, created a lot of chances from out there. Got some assists and uh, did really well as a right winger. Campos flicking a header into the box. It almost drops for him for a shot. Mirabelli trying to get it clear on the edge of the area. Doesn't quite drop for him. And Lang will blast this one into the stand just for some respite there for FC Edmonton. And over the stands into the parking lot. Franks from the right wing flashes across. The face of goal there, and that was dangerous for a moment, but Campos just didn't time his run, and he's gone behind for a goal kick. Minnesota pushing, though, and again, as when you looked at this uh, formation, the way they're starting the game with the three out-and-out -out strikers, you knew that they weren't going to be holding back, that they were going to try to attack early. They, they want to set the tone. Last time they were here, they lost 3-1. And, and a big problem for Minnesota was Edmonton jumped on right at the start of that game. Had a quick 2-0 lead. And I think Minnesota wants to fix that error in the sense that they don't want to sit back and let Edmonton come at them. They want to they wanna be proactive even though they're on the road. Goal kick that Parker will take. Nurse is underneath it. So is Malice, who wins it for Minnesota, but Laverty, a good break forward and a nice pass out wide for Mirabelli. Lang's making the overlapping run, and here is Lang into the path for perhaps a cross, but uh, just had to stretch a bit too much for that ball and has a throw in out on that far side of the field. A bad throw towards the near post and headed out. Good pressure from FC Edmonton. They'll have a corner. Laverty comes forward to take this one. It's a bit of a change too on that set piece with Lang taking that throw. We've uh, got used to the last couple of weeks to see uh, Corey Herzog taking those long throws in when they're deep into the territory. So again, a little bit of a new wrinkle with Lang taking that throw in. Laverty from the left wing. It's gone right to the heart of the goal and headed away well by Minnesota. Nurse tries to get it back out to that left flank rather than Lang but uh, can't find his man, and it's a throw-in for Minnesota. Oh, very high, that ball. Mirabelli gets ahead on it. Lang up there again. Neil Laverty and deft touch out to the flank, and Mirabelli has Lang outside him again. Again, it just doesn't work out for FC Edmonton. They concede another throw-in. Minnesota in the light blue, attacking the goal to our left. Headed away there by Watson, who's been dragged out of the middle. Nurse and Mirabelli combining to get possession back for Edmonton. And that final ball just lacking, another throw in. Mirabelli pushed that ball up the wing there, but he had a lateral pass across the right to Dos Anjos, wide open, who had no one within about 30 yards of him uh, on the right side. He was able, would have been able to switch that ball rather than push it up. And that's what's going to happen with these two very different formations today, uh, with uh, Edmonton having a very packed midfield against Minnesota, which is which is running which looks almost like a very straightforward 3-3. Uh, you'll have a you'll have the numbers in the middle of the park. So they, Edmonton's got to use that. They've got to use that number advantage. Good play switch there to the right and a nice touch by Rago. Rago advancing to the edge of the penalty area. Beats his man beautifully. Nice play. Good cross to the far post. There's a chance. The header is going to be claimed by Van Elko. But a nice break and cross for Antonio Rago. Uh, in, in, it's unlucky for Edmonton that the, the player that bounced to uh, when it went towards Van Ockel, the player who could make that challenge was Dosange. And I just talked about how he likes to play uh, bigger than his size and how he likes to be tough in the tackle and he's not willing to take on players, but that's a, that's a jump ball he's not going to win against the keeper. He's giving up almost a foot there. Nurse pushing a ball down the flank. Trying to work the channels and winning another throw in for FC Edmonton. Man 
Alex Lang with the throw. It's clipped over the top by four dice. Drops for Mirabelli. Again, nothing comes of it. Another throw for Minnesota. Watson penalized there, concedes a free kick. Pitch Colin switching flanks for Tobin. Tobin's forward ball controlled by Bracalello. Referee waves play on. Abati trying to switch play. It's intercepted by Minnesota. Uh, Ambersley pushing the ball forward, looking for Campos, but it'll go out for a goal kick. Dago bringing the ball out of defence. Pass forward, Herzog controls it, and he's found Dosange. Bit of a misunderstanding between Do Dosange and Fordyce, but Herzog, a willing runner there, and made sure that Diaz had to watch that one carefully. Still not the worst situation in the world to force a, a throw deep in Minnesota territory. Ago goes up to the head of Proctor trying to win it back. Laverty challenging in there. Campos playing it back into the defensive area. Quick ball over the top. Rago got his work cut out for him here, watching Simone Bracalello. And he's done it well. Just shepherded that one into touch for another goal kick. Good physical battle there between Bracalello and Rago. Bracalello getting his foot to it, managing to flick that ball ahead and getting it into a dangerous position with Rago doing a good job, getting body position against a bigger player and able to shield that ball. Parker's goal kicks up towards halfway. Nurse will challenge for it, wins a nice header. Dosange trying to control it. Diaz takes it away from him, Bracalello. Taking a touch. Yeah, still going down that left hand side and finds Ambersley. Ball never went out of place, says the referee. And Herzog trying to get in behind Pitch Colon here. Good work by Pitch Colon, but Herzog does take it away from him. And a cheeky little back here to release Dosange. Whips it in low. There's a real chance in there, well cleared by the Minnesota defense. Good pressure. From FC Edmonton. It all starts because it all starts because Corey Herzog refuses to give up on what should have been a lost cause. He stole the ball from Pitch Cole and then the, the little back heel flick there to Dosange, who goes low with the cross, trying to find Neil Halavity in front of goal. Good interception there. But again, starts off with some hard work there by Corey Herzog, who uh, wins that ball. And you know, sometimes you think those are lost causes, but you still chase it down. You never know what you're gonna force, you never know what you can do to defender. Cross to the far post from Nurse. Mirabelli just couldn't get his head on that. Battles for it to win it back, but loses out. And it's a throw in for Minnesota. Massimo's got to get to that ball. He's got to be able to head that back across goal. It's a, that's a miss of a, of a very decent cross that he can play back into a dangerous area. I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Sunshine maybe lost it or lost the play of the ball, misjudged it, but uh, it uh, looked, like a, looked like an outfielder missing a fly ball there. And you, you need a be able to, to keep the pressure on and keep that ball in the area. It's Brian Coleman who seems to be in uh, some discomfort there. Referee just uh, stopping play to wait for him to recover. Mirabelli apologizes for the challenge. Just really trying to win the ball back there and just followed through and walked into the stand and fell a bit awkwardly could have been the problem. Rowan goes down the line, flipped on by Campos. Lang is there to chip this one back. Hey, Lagos, the coach for Minnesota, up off uh, the dugout there with some instructions to his team. In 15 minutes, no goals so far. 
see Edmonton with a free kick here. Lang, who scored last week that highly controversial goal, he'll drill this one to the other flank and find Dosange. Dosange touch just lets him down a bit there and concedes the throw in. Lots of stops and starts to this game right now. A lot of set pieces, a lot of balls, uh, two or three passes, and a stoppage again. No real flow being established right now. Proctor wins a header. Nurse trying to drive his team forward, but it's back uh, with Minnesota. Here's a chance for Campos from the left wing. Proctor comes across to cover him, gets a touch on that, but still a crossing chance. Campos gets the ball in, and Lang buys it down for Parker, who can pick it up and gets the play going again with Mirabelli. Pressure by Minnesota, nowhere really for Lang to go. Uh, just uh, pushes it down the line. They can't seem to get into a rhythm at the moment, FC Edmonton. Not a lot of players moving there for Lang either, try to help him out. No one coming to him and offering themselves as a passing option. So, you know, Lang is left with almost no choice but to boot it down there because uh, a lot of static feet there in that situation. And, you know, you're, you're looking at it as the passer and you're looking for someone to make themselves available. You don't have a lot of options. So in the end, you just got to hoof it down the field. Neil Laverty not very impressed with the referee's decision there for that foul against Campos. Free kick given to Minnesota. And once again, we see Pitch Coleman is going to start off behind that defensive line again. See him just creeping there uh, behind the center, central defenders. But uh, he's already standing in that offside position. We'll see if he moves back again as much as he did in the last free kick. Bracolello and Malice over the wall again. Malice has drilled it towards goal. It's very close as well. Parker scampering across his goal line. Wasn't too far away. Malice on loan from the Montreal Impact. Uh, he came here during the uh, during the break between the fall, uh, spring and fall seasons, and he has a go and uh, just bends it outside. Malice down with Minnesota to try to get some minutes. Uh, Montreal hopeful that uh, maybe he could have the same effect that uh, Carlisle Mitchell's had with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, spent the spring season in Edmonton, and I gotta tell you, uh, watching the uh, Whitecaps play the impact yesterday, Carlisle Mitchell was the best player on the field. And, uh, and I, I, you know, you just see him come around so much because of his time with FC Edmonton. Free kick given against the Eddies. The home crowd uh, showing what they think of that one. Malice playing it back to Van Oakle. Good pressure there from Chris Nurse, throwing off that passing game of Minnesota, then winning the ball back. It's good energy from Nurse. And he's managed to concede the throw in, but two or three strong challenges in there. It's really what the game needs is someone to inject a little bit of passion. Uh, we've, we've played almost 20 minutes now, and as I said, this is a lot of stops and starts, not a lot of rhythm to this game, and it just needs someone to, to have that kind of run, to try the tackle, to inject some pace into the game. Mirabelli to the edge of the penalty area, onto his left foot, drives it wide. Ball was sitting there waiting for the strike, he had a go. But low down to Van Ockel's right-hand post. Mirabelli, Mirabelli is cut into the middle of the park here, surrounded by three defenders, and just decides he doesn't have an option. He's going to have a go, but you know, really, it looks like he's going to have a go. He knows from about 30 yards in that that he's going to have a try, going to give that left foot a, a an attempt. Rago gets his head to a loose ball. Watson heading in along. Drops for Diaz, forward to Bracolello. Diaz has continued his run. It's a good break by Minnesota. Nice cross into the box there, but well claimed by Parker. Good overarm throw as well. Mirabelli's lost it. 
Herzog just trips at a vital moment there, and the ball is in possession of Minnesota again. Bracanello's ball over the top, there's no flag. Ambersley winding up for the strike, a tackle from behind by Albert Watson, and that was an important challenge to concede the corner. Well timed by Albert Watson, he knows the ball's bouncing. He understands the situation that, that Ambersley is going to have to wait a second for that ball to come down to be a comfortable attempt for him on a volley. He's waiting, waiting on that next bounce. It gives Watson just time to wrap a foot around and get a foot to the ball. Very, very good defending, but as well understanding the conditions, understanding the turf, understanding that that kind of attempt takes a little bit longer on the turf, takes a little bit longer for the ball to come down and, and for the striker to get settled. And you have an extra step to try to make it up and, and to make the tackle without a danger of fouling. Bracalello's corners bubbling around in that area and uh, Nurse doesn't really get a clean clearance but does get the ball away from the danger zone and concedes the throw in. Great tackle by Nurse winning the ball back. Referee says unfairly just as it looked to be opening up for FC Edmonton. <laughs> Nurse on Floyd Franks. <laughs> Referee was on the spot. Nurse winning it back again. He's trying to drive his team forward here. Floyd Franks chipping the ball to the left wing. Ambersley in possession. And Diaz. Good ball to the far post, wasn't a bad effort. But a Barra's run, just uh, not quite in sync. And it's another goal kick. That's it, Floyd Franks and Chris Nurse squaring off in the middle of the park. It's an intriguing matchup. If there's uh, two, if you ask around the league, what central midfielders you love to hate to play against are the ones that annoy you the most. If you talk to other players around the league, they would probably tell you Floyd Franks and Chris Nurse, both players are very willing to be physical, have racked up their share of cards in their, their careers, and have some reputations for, you know, like following through on, on challenges with a little bit of gusto. And it's gonna be interesting seeing them square off against each other and how much they sort of cancel each other out. Throw in for Racco here. Ball up the line, Fordyce gets possession. Laverty running onto it, but it's away by Aaron Pitch Colon. Barra making a run. The rebellion Lang taking the ball away from him. It's with Lang. Now Chris Nurse. Nurse plays a nice push ball right for Rago. Rago's got Proctor arriving. Proctor's looking to find Herzog. It's a nice touchdown for Fordyce. He has intercepting it for Dosanj. Battling to win it back. And Fordyce has got the ball now. Dosanj outside of him, but plays it towards Herzog. Tried the flick on the edge of the penalty area, and Pitch Colon has it back and finds Campos. Good break by Campos here. But Nurse tracking back gets to slow him down a little bit before Franks plays it out wide to the right wing. And has continued his run. Good break by Franks there. And he will get the cross in, and again it flashes. Cross Lance Parker's goal and nobody gets the touch. It's the second time that low cross has come uh, dangerously across the Edmonton penalty area where it's gone untouched, luckily for FC Edmonton. But but Minnesota's been able to flash some of these balls in in dangerous positions and sooner or later if those don't get cut off at the source, Pablo Campos is going to be able to get a toe on one of those and just stick it in the net. But that play was started, Chris Nurse broke it up initially there. But Campos was able to turn, and you look at him, such a big man, and being, the way he's so quickly able to control the ball and turn on it really defies how big he is on the pitch. And he, he plays, he has nimble feet, like he's not the kind of large target man type of striker that he is. But he has that ability to, hit, to hurt you both ways with his size and his skill. He has his throw, flipped on by Campos. Ambersley is there, Proctor standing firm against him and winning the throw-in for the Eddies and finds Watson. Watson the skipper stroking a nice pass to the chest of Mirabelli. Mirabelli back in field for Neil Laverty and into the path of Lang. 
effort by Lang to win the corner for FC Edmonton. Nice movement there down that left wing by Flaverty, Lang, and Mirabelli. Corner kick. Flaverty's become the, the corner kick specialist for, for FC Edmonton. He takes them from both sides. Swings this one deep. Dosange has the rebound. Back into the penalty area, away by Pitch Golan. Could be a break by Minnesota here. Campos has two runners either side of him. Might go it all alone as well. It's going to be Campos straight at Lance Parker. I just talked about how nimble Campos was and the skill he has, and that time he was just playing out selfish. He had options on both sides, players running. It was a three on two for Minnesota. Dosanz was desperately trying to track back to, to even up the numbers, but Campos had options on both sides. Guys wide open with channels, and he took a very low percentage shot that he mishit that gave Lance Parker an easy save. It's a big let off for FC Edmonton there. Minnesota had them on the break, and Campos has got to look to a teammate in that situation. He can't take it himself there. Simone Bracalello here for Minnesota. Great challenge by Proctor. Comes with a cleanly with the ball. Dosanz to Herzog. Herzog trying to hold it up, but two blue shirts crowding him out there. And Minnesota have the ball again. Brian Coleman. Pitch Colan's going to strike this one up high towards Campos. He's uh, strong as a target man. Legs play nicely with Ambersley there. Campos makes a run at goal himself there, but uh, perhaps one man too many, and Proctor is getting in a trailing boot in there and winning it back. But now Tibera again for Minnesota. And Ambersley managed to wait up the left footed cross, but it'll drop for Lang. Links up with Mirabelli. Put it Lang's played a nice ball to Fordyce there, and now Herzog. Mirabelli. It's good for FC Edmonton here. Fordyce in it. Space at the edge of the penalty area. It might drop for Dosange. It does. Gagan Dosange, right footed shot. Diaz stands up to it well and gets in the block. Looked at first at Mirabelli, mishit the pass, but a Minnesota defender, as he was going to cut it off, fell down. And that's a, the second or third time we've seen people on this turf just fall down. Uh, we saw it with Corey Herzog a couple of minutes ago, and uh, just saw it again. And this turf, you, you say it's uh, it's turf, how tricky can it be? It's got a lot of seams in it. And, and in games and in training, there's been quite a few uh, non-contact injuries to FC Edmonton players uh, because of the seams and such on it. This is a very tricky surface. It's uh, not just that it's uh, a very quick turf, but those seams and those football lines, folks, they're so into the turf. They're actually part of the turf. They're not painted. So you actually feel the seams and the, the undulations on the field when you go across them. Bracalello from 30 yards. The driven shot charged down by Watson. It'll drop for Ibera. Beaten one man there, Ibera. Good break to the edge of the box. Left footed ball in there, but Proctor keeps it away from Campos again. It's Diaz. Scored the last time the two teams met. That cross charged down by Chris Nurse. And it's going to be a Minnesota ball again. Good effort by Bracalello to make that run in front of Campos, but it didn't reach him in the end. Coleman has it. Possessed by Lang that time, and now it's Flaverty, former Minnesota player. Ball deflects to Fordyce, and the referee gets in the way there of Fordyce's cross field pass. And it's just difficult for both teams to get the passing going, it seems like, out there. Yeah, the official's hands went up an apology as soon as the, uh, as soon as the, the switch of play attempt uh, bounced off of him there and uh, turned over possession to Minnesota. Diaz again in space on the left wing. Dosange coming across to cover, but he's made the pass towards Andersley. Proctor watching him. And it's Franks. Now Malice. 
Lions played a good pass out wide to the right. Good build up here by Minnesota. Real danger here as he cuts it back for Campos, who just doesn't get that right at all. And the shot in the end doesn't even hit the corner flag. It's gone for a throw in. I tell you, that just went straight sideways and up and sideways off of the, the boot of Pablo Campos. That, uh, as you said, a miss hit uh, of that attempt. It was it was was good work too that was uh, spoiled there. Uh, even if he's able to stand and maybe control that ball for a second, not try to hit it for his time. Uh, he's got numbers in the box, and uh, uh, a real good effort goes wasted. No goals. We played about half an hour. Last time out for Minnesota was a defeat to New York, who topped the table at the moment. Here's Rago. Rago chasing to the edge of the penalty area. Good break from fullback. Rago trying to beat his man. Diaz just does enough. Released to Barra. Simone Bracalello. Still going Bracalello. Dosange trying to take it away from him, but he's played it back to Van Oko. Left footed gets it clear. Rago sneaking in and winning it back. Claverty using his hand to get the better of that position. And it's a free kick. Not much mystery about that call. The arm was extended, the ball moved off of Lavity's arm. And uh, once again, more stop and start kind of play that we've seen all for, for about 30 consecutive minutes. Uh, just a lot of uh, back and forth. Yeah, clearly and ball uh, there by, by Neil Lavity. And uh, see what Minnesota does now going forward. Bring a lot of men forward but for Diaz to probably play this long. Toward the edge of the penalty area, Proctor getting in on that one and Haverty clearing it. It's going to drop for Dosange here. What a bad situation for FC Edmonton. Dosange looking to break to the outside. Franks has come across to close him down. He's a bit isolated out there, but it's what a free kick for FC Edmonton. Van Oakle. In the goal for Minnesota, you'll have to defend this free kick. There it was, bit of pushing and shoving, and just uh, slightly too physical for the referee's liking. And a free kick given. And again, it's Neil Laverty taking this one against his former team. Watson's gone forward for it. So has Proctor. Gone up towards the far post, and it's well defended. But Dosange might be able to get it back to Laverty. In fact, in the end, Minnesota are on a streaking breakaway here. Campos is wide to the right. Ibera's making a run into the middle. Nice pass there for Ambersley across the face of goal, but Parker makes the block. Very good save by Lance Parker. The second time we've seen now Minnesota get a three-on-two break after a corner kick from FC Edmonton uh, is broken up. And this time, Ibarra with a nice play through to Ambersley. He takes the option on the side. Ambersley has a go. He had numbers going towards the goal as well. Good save by Lance Parker. Got low, got the angle. Did a good, did well to keep it out. Way by Claverty this time. Herzog will chase that one down. But he's just outnumbered there, and Pitch Colon heads it away from him and puts that ball into the stands. Remember, Rogers customers can watch every Blue Jays game this season on Sportsnet, live on your smartphone. You can visit rogersanyplacetv.com slash sports to get started. Blue Jays baseball on your smartphone. Nil-nil here, we've played 33 minutes. Very tight game. Minnesota perhaps with the better chances. Nothing really of any clear-cut nature so far. Very cagey game out there. In the center building again here with Diaz and Ibera. Links play well between the midfield and the forwards. Franks picks out Malice. Campos edge of the area. Ibera chipping across to the far post. Parker is going to make that ball his and then this does sounds going great distribution from Lance Parker and we've seen that in most of the games this season very good at throwing that ball out and releasing both fullbacks in those positions hey. 
Yeah, Diaz there, there was, an, there was an opportunity. Diaz had come up from the left back position to try to take that, that cross. And the slow getting back, uh, when Dos Sanchez had the ball up the right wing, there was a chance there with uh, a full back out of position. But again, Edmonton couldn't capitalize. Watson getting ahead on that one. Franks with a touch. Slavity with the crunching challenge on Diaz. That's going to drop for Herzog. And now Mirabelli takes it into the penalty area and tries his luck with the left boot. Wasn't a bad effort, but just over the angle from Mirabelli. That would have been a, a, a wonder goal had he hit the target. That's a, a, a tough shot because he's actually cutting away from goal, turning away from the net and trying to swing it back towards goal. And in fact, it was, was pretty well wide from, from our angle up in the broadcast booth. It looks closer than it is because we're up on the opposite post, but uh, area, opposite side of the field. But uh, replay shows that that uh, was actually wide by a little bit. A couple of shots, though, from Mirabelli in this match so far. And he's in the team to run at players and get crosses in. Rago bringing the ball out from defense, getting a bit of a run in the team because of an injury to Eddie Edward. Malice in the midfield for Minnesota. That's a ball over the top of Rago, and he's picked out Ambersley beautifully. Ambersley infield towards Franks. Franks supported by Simone Bracalello. Ambersley again cushions it onto his right foot. There's the far post cross. Proctor heading it away. Malice is going to try a long range effort, and he scored to beauty for Callum Malice. And in truth, the goal's been coming, and Minnesota have a one in lead. That, that ball took a wicked deflection on the way through. Uh, that gave Lance Parker absolutely no chance. We'll have a look at it again. But you can clearly see this ball changes direction. Malice hits this shot. It's a nice volley. But to make matters worse for Lance Parker, that ball just takes a deflection. I think it's off the, off the defender coming through. I think it may have been Chris Nurse. That it just takes a, takes a touch off him there. You see off his thigh as he's coming forward. And that just causes the ball to, gives it all the help it needs to uh, to fool Lance Parker and really with the power and then with the deflection, no chance for the keeper there. And uh, as you said, it was coming. Minnesota was creating more of the chances. They've been the ones going forward. And uh, you can't fault, you can't say that this lead isn't deserved right now for Minnesota United. Good time for them to score as well with uh, just under 10 minutes to half time. Campos causing problems again in there and Proctor coming across to concede the throw in. Just that front, front three for Minnesota have been dangerous. Ambersley, Campos, and Bracalello. Yeah, and, and they put a lot of pressure. They've been able to get balls outside. Ambersley's been able to swing in some crosses. And, and that's really what Minnesota's been trying to do, get those get those wide chances, split Bracalello, split Ambersley off, have Campos in the middle as the option, as a, as a target. But in this case, it's Malice who had a goal earlier in the game, uh, who, who has, has the attempt and... Uh, so the, the deflection, but it, the deflection helped, but it was still a heck of a strike. He got a lot on that ball. Barrow will keep this ball in on the right wing. Supported by Kalman and Franks coming across as well. There is Pitch Colon, just a short pass to Franks, and now Malice, the goal scorer. Franks has uh, picked out Ibera on that right hand side. Mirabelli stealing it away nicely. Good challenge by Mirabelli. Left foot of his ball forward. Aims to pick out Fordyce. Fordyce muscled out of it. by Minnesota out from the back. Good pressure by the Eddies that time though, and in the end, Pitch Colon playing it back to Van Oakle. Long ball forward by him, headed away by Proctor. Run back by Nurse in the midfield. Referee says it was unfairly won, there was a bit of a high boot, and the free kick given to Minnesota. Minnesota chance to put more pressure on here. Free kick from about 35 yards out, just a little bit under 35 yards. And maybe Malice is feeling pretty good about himself. It looks like he's standing over the ball uh, after that last goal. And uh, him, him and the Pitch Colin are all discussing who's going to take it. 
Brackalow looks like he's going to stand up on this, but uh, it's Coleman, Malice, and Brackalow three over the ball here. Brackalow takes a touch first, and then left-footed shoots, and that got a deflection too. And Parker pushes it away with the parry and saves the day for FC Edmonton. That was an unusual but effective uh, strategy there with uh, Pitch Colin and Miles moving over the ball, and you're expecting that they're just changing the angle of the shot for Bracalello, and what he does, he just takes it and runs with it because everyone's expecting to block the shot, and he changes the angle severely because he decides to take a few steps with it and then has a go. Uh, very clever. I, I like that. It's a little outside the box thinking by Minnesota there. Not really something you'd see on a free kick where, where a guy doesn't just just take the shot off the movement of the ball, actually moves forward, tries to change the shooting angle totally, and uh, forced Lance Parker into a very good save. Edmondson conceding uh, another free kick on the edge of their own penalty area here. Already one down, and Minnesota pressing for another with four minutes to half time. Bracalello and Malice over the ball this time. Malice, the goal scorer. And throwing a lot of bodies forward at the far post as well. Malice has uh, driven this one very long and very high, and that's uh, flown by everyone. Well, he let everyone know. He had the he apologized to his teammates as soon as he took it. Uh, there was, uh, and then the, the targeting was about 20 yards off. Malice uh, not nearly as uh, accurate as he was with the. Uh, this, the couple, couple of previous strikes where he scored and had another one that was a fairly close shave. But in that case, uh, Malice is feeling pretty good about it. He's just scored, and that one he just lets go. Maybe the adrenaline's still pumping a little bit from the goal. Ambersley in possession for Minnesota. Nurse snapping away at him and making the challenge, putting the ball into the crowd. Throw in for Minnesota. You know, and this this just shows the how this game has been. This especially as we gone as the first half has gone on, we've uh, called Lance Parker's name several times because uh, he's been called into action. And really, Matt Van Okel, have we talked about him at all, other than maybe catching a catching a a, a, a corner or or taking a, a goal kick? Uh, he has had very very little to do uh, in terms of uh, in terms of work, and, and and Edmonton really hasn't had any luck even creating chances. We're not talking about missing chances. There's been a couple of long shot attempts by Massimo Birabelli, but that's about it when you think about it. Pretty easy half for Van Opel so far then, but that might change here with Mirabelli in possession again. Coming in towards the penalty area. Lang overlapping, good cross there. Looking for four dice. Minnesota scrambling a bit for about the first time in the game. Nurse winning the ball back here. Arago. Dosange tackled very nicely by Diaz there. Proctor trying to get things moving again down the right-hand side, but it's going to be a throw-in to Minnesota. They say goals change games. It's a cliche that we use all, it's used all the time, but in this case, maybe this is the thing that Edmonton needs to bring them to life. They're playing rope-a-dope. They're just getting, we're getting away with it, getting away with it. Uh, not really having any luck going forward and now being punished and being down a goal and having a couple of other real scares maybe this is the the thing that injects some life into them maybe they realize wow you know we're not getting away with it minnesota's now not just pressing the advantage they've got the lead and and, and you have to think that something's got to spur this edmonton team to life because right now they're really having a hard time putting passes together getting anything forward and really not putting minnesota players under any real pressure Edmonton with the free kick here as we approach half time. Rago's forward ball in search of Herzog. Gets a chest on it. Fordyce taking up the play. Malice, the goal scorer, clearing the ball up that right wing, looking for the. Very energetic, Ambersley. And a barrier again, sidestepping a challenge and sweeping a pass to Diaz. 
Barra full of running. Got Diaz with him again. Cuts back the cross. Proctor getting the clearance. Tobin and Malice. And they have one minute added on. There's a shot that Parker will pick up easily. His team trailing 1 0. Time ticking away at the end of the first half as Lang chips one into the path of Herzog. Edge of the penalty area. He will hold the ball up for Dosange. Dragon Dosange back for Herzog. Good cross to the far post. It might drop for Lang. Tries the volley. Miscues it. Gets a second bite of the cherry. And he doesn't really get good wood on that either. And Van Opel picks up the ball again for Minnesota. He's now waiting for the halftime whistle. And I have a feeling that uh, the FC Edmonton dressing room might not be the most pleasant place in the world over the next 15 minutes. That is half time. 1 0 to Minnesota. The lead, the goal from Callum Malice. The difference between the teams at half time. The Eddies have got to regroup at half time. Corey Herzog walking off the pitch with his teammates. There's Chris Nurse. Put a lot of effort in, some strong challenges in that first half, Chris Nurse, but. They never really quite got going. No, it's, it's absolutely bottled up by Minnesota. Uh, I, I think Minnesota will be just as, Manny Lagos might just be as happy with not really giving up any scoring chance of note, not just having the lead, but uh, really shutting down Edmonton at home. Let's join Manny Lagos, the Minnesota coach. He's with us uh, pitch side. Manny, tell us how you feel about how your team's played in that first half. Well, I thought it was a good first half for us. You know, I, I thought we really came out with some intensity, winning balls in good spots, creating chances. You know, uh, you know it was a good half. What about the rest of the way? What uh, what do you say to your players at halftime to continue this uh, this form you're having? Listen, I, I, I think it's it's only a one goal game. We certainly know we're, we're playing away. And we know that they're going to come out. It so I think we really have to come out in the second half with the same intensity we did in the first half and, and really decide to to when to push the game and keep the ball in good spots and, and get some good chances and, and hopefully close the game out. Thanks, Manny. Thank you. Manny Lagos, uh, very pleased as you would expect with the first half performance from his team. Minnesota United with a 1-0 lead. Callum Malice with the goal. We're going to see and speak to Colin Miller right away at pitch side. Steve. Colin, uh, maybe just talk a little bit how you're going to address this at halftime and, and get this thing back on the rails for the second half. Well, I think one of the biggest differences, Steve, is uh, their front two players and our front two players, they're keeping them, their team in possession. Our team's losing possession through losing uh, good quality balls being played up to them and giving the ball away far too easy. There's no lack of commitment. We're getting people into the box and people getting into into good areas. Gagan de Sanchez has to be a bit better in possession. Um, you know, he's getting into some terrific areas, but the, the, once again, the final ball. There's not a lot uh, wrong. They're picking up one or two more second balls that, I, that we spoke about. I didn't want them to do that. Uh, so I think just tidying up on the second balls, continue to keep the pace of the game up. There's, there has been a slight breeze uh, at the back of Minnesota, so um, hopefully that will help us in the second half as well. Talk a little bit of the goal that, that you surrendered. Looks like uh, Malice's shot took a bit of a deflection off Chris Nurse as he tried to block that shot. Did it, yeah, because I, my initial reaction was I thought Lance should have saved it. So if the ball has been deflected, then I'll, uh, I'll probably defend my goalkeeper. But no pressure on the ball. Uh, you know, and the, the big fella's done very well for Minnesota. I, he's a player that I, I admire. And uh, we're going to have to get, get tighter and, and just be a little bit better, tidier in possession. There's not a... We're not a million miles away. Minnesota are a quality team. Take nothing away from them. They've spent a lot of money. They've got some big money players playing for them. Uh, so we don't have a divine right to win here. But we have to regroup, settle things down a wee bit in the second half and try to get at, uh, get at their fullbacks a little bit better. All right, thank you, Colin. Okay, thanks, guys. Colin Miller joining his pitch side. His team have got a formidable home record. Last time they lost here was seven games ago, so they'll be hoping to bounce back in the second half. Minnesota with the one nothing lead, that strike from Callum Malice, the difference between the teams at halftime.
FC Edmonton trailing by one goal to nil at halftime. Callum Malice's goal, the difference between the teams in the NASL at Clark Stadium. Let's take a look back at the first half highlights. Brought to you by Cap City Landscaping. The grass is greener. Minnesota, some good passing, some good link-up play throughout that first half. And there's the strike by Malice. Took a slight deflection, but struck it well enough that it just rode its luck. Yeah, Chris Nurse comes out to challenge the shot, which he's supposed to do. Proctor there with the initial clearance. Malice there, and you can see Nurse just tries to get a piece of it. It does skip off his uh, skip off of him there. You see it change direction, change spin just a little bit, and uh, takes it past Lance Barker, who I, I don't think really had much of a chance there. That was that was well into the corner. Manny Lagos, the happier of the two managers at halftime, his team leading FC Edmonton by one goal to nil. The second half is coming up next from Clark Stadium. FC Edmonton Soccer on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the Fath Group, building Alberta for more than 50 years. By High Signs, let's light it up. And by Earthwater, the official water of FC Edmonton. Beautiful day in Edmonton again. Lovely fall weather. But Edmonton trailing Minnesota by one goal to nil at halftime. We're waiting for the players to come back out for the second half. Coach Colin Millers talked about how important the home matches are for FC Edmonton between now and the end of the season. They're basically their cup finals all the way now. And the next one, two weeks from today, Carolina, October the 6th. And you can still get tickets from fcedmonton.com. Now, the one good thing for Edmonton now swinging into October is, you know, we've heard FC Edmonton compl complain, not just to complain, they accept the fact that it happens. It when they go on the road in June and August to a place like Carolina and Tampa and the weather is just punishingly hot and now there's going to be a bit of that payback in October when it's going to be cold here and those teams from the warm weather climates are going to come up and uh, have to deal with the elements on, uh, in a different way and uh, I know there's uh, two games in October and uh, especially getting later into the month it's, it's, not, uh, it's not summer anymore uh, as we're, getting, we're having an unusually warm September which is great but uh, I know Edmonton, uh, as an on-field thing, would love to have a little bit of cooler weather to be a little more inhospitable for the, the road teams. That's Steve Sandor, and I'm Gareth Hampshire joining you from Clark Stadium, and you can connect with us on Twitter as well, at CBC Gareth for me, at the 11 CA for Steve. Well, Colin Miller will have had some uh, words of encouragement at halftime for his players. Certainly hinted that uh, he wasn't very pleased with that first half performance, and he'll be looking for a reaction from his team in this second half. Talked about how the forward players had just been giving up the ball far too much for his liking. Yeah, there's been uh, a lot of lost balls and no sustained pressure from Edmonton because of that, and Colin identified that as the major problem. Not being able to hold the ball up in the offensive zone, not being able in the final third to be able to have the ball to make a play, but giving it away too easily, letting Minnesota come at you again. Minnesota have got us going again for the second 45 minutes, attacking the goal to our right. Conditions very nice in Alberta's capital today. 20 degrees, a slight wind from the south. With beautiful conditions for a game of footy out there today. And Minnesota making the best of them at the moment with a 1 0 lead, but still just one goal in it. And Mirabelli making sure that Edmonton have the ball back very early here in the second half. Lance Lang with a throw in. Cordice has got a flick on that. Herzog holds it up this time and wins a free kick. For FC Edmonton and some immediate applause from Colin Miller down in the dugout right by where that happened. Lang tried to switch play to the right hand side but he's given it back to Minnesota and there's an attack building here. On 
ball into the penalty area that Rago gets his head on, but drops for Simone Bracalello. He's still got possession of it. Rago now getting a touch on that one. Diaz has the ball. Franks is going to switch play to the right wing, and Ibera. Ibera played a very nice first half. It's a cross that's going to drop all the way in there for Campos, and a great chance it was, too. One of the uh, rare mishandling errors from Lance Parker that we see, but he managed to recover in time to make the save. Well, I don't know if this is so much Lance Parker recovering or Pablo Campos absolutely missing a chance. I think David Proctor might throw him off a little bit with that sliding challenge, but for a striker, an M the reigning MVP of this league, to absolutely mishit that when you have an open net yawning at you. What a let off for FC Edmonton. They should be down two right now. Minnesota should have that second goal. It was handed to them on a platter and they decided to give it back. And we'll see how that figures later in the game. If Edmonton were to tie this up, if Edmonton were to score, how big will that Pablo Campos miss be? Corner for Edmonton here. Laverty in towards the near post. It's headed away. It'll drop for Lang. Lang puts a cross up to the far post, headed away by the Minnesota defense. It's with Watson. Watson's got a chance to get this ball back in the danger zone, and Proctor got his head on it. It's gone behind for a goal kick. And now we see Edmonton. They got to feel that maybe, maybe the worm has turned a little bit when things happen like that. Maybe you get that one break, and it sparks that fire, as I said. Need to get some 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 momentum going forward again off that corner. Didn't really develop a, a scoring chance off of it. Need to have something uh, going forward that uh, that really pressures Minnesota, that forces their defenders into uh, into some mistakes. Amber's the edge of the box here again for Minnesota on that left hand side. Played the ball back to Franks. Franks tries to switch it to the right flank, but Mirabelli. Plays it back across the face of goal. Rago getting a touch on it. Rago again, who has to concede the corner kick. Not sure of what was behind him. And Minnesota started well in the second half as well. They've got another corner here. Started off by a very poor clearing attempt by Massimo Birabelli. He cuts that right back across the top of the box as if he's doing Minnesota a favor by crossing it for Edmonton instead of getting that up the sideline. Forces Rago to make a quick decision to punch that ball up. It's brought back in by Minnesota, and again, Rago's got to be safety first. Just nod that away for a corner. But that really is created by Mirabelli's mistake by firing that ball across his own area. Bacalello's corner whipping across the face of goal, and it will drop to Mirabelli, and this time he chases away up the left-hand side. He's been pegged back. Some good defensive work by Franks there. And has conceded the throw-in. Miguel Ibarra will take the throw. And I see uh, West Knights taking off the warm-up jacket. Pitch Cole and the man breaking through there, winding up for the strike, and it's a charge down from him. And it's going to be a corner again for Minnesota. Looks like Colin Miller was going to give this a few minutes with this lineup to see if things had changed, uh, to see if the, the momentum had shifted. And I think at minute 50, only five minutes into the second half now, he's looking at the bench. West Knight looking him play the first time since early this season when he broke his foot in Minnesota at the Dome in uh, early on. And he hasn't played since. This will be his chance to uh, get back in the lineup. Diaz on the far post from that corner. They're appealing for handball against Nurse, but Nurse, I don't think, could really get out of the way of that one, just trying to block the shot. He's holding this ball in at the goal line but the corner has been conceded so a flood of corners early on in the second half for Minnesota and really this is more of the same Minnesota keeping that pressure on like they were in the, the later stages of the first half pinning Edmonton back and forcing Edmonton to some mistakes in their own in, in end giving the ball back to Minnesota rather cheaply and and, and offering Minnesota extra opportunities towards goal. Bracalello's corner driven in low. Laverty doing well to block it. Trying to win it back again on that right-hand side. Another corner whipped in. They're appealing for yet another corner, but it's been cleared by FC Edmonton, and Mirabelli will get his foot on the ball. 
and has gone around his man. But Franks getting the benefit of the doubt there from the referees. A little lucky, I think, that the free kick going to Minnesota. Yeah, look like they're both both just jostling for the ball there. Franks has got his arms on him. Massimo's got his arms. It's really, you know, one or the other. The ref could have picked a foul out on each either of them in that situation. And uh, they both got their arms on each other and uh, decides in that case to, to err, and cross, err in the favor of the defender. West Knight's coming on now. He's going to replace Gaga and Dosan. And this is Knight's first action in, uh, since I believe April, uh, that, uh, that he broke his foot in Minnesota. And a uh, long road back for him, a guy that... Uh, I think a lot of people uh, expected at the start of the season when when he was signed by FC Edmonton to be a regular. I think he led the league in minutes played last year in San Antonio. And the former Whitecap has uh, had his injury issues and uh, is fighting to get back into that lineup. Minnesota cross whipped in from the left hand side. Ibero won't get to that goal kick for FC Edmonton. Well, Colin Miller not waiting very long to change things at the beginning of the second half. No, and he'd mentioned during the halftime talk that he felt that Dosanj had to do a better job of uh, holding the ball up. To be fair, I don't think Dosanj had a chance to even see the ball in the first four minutes or five minutes of this half, but I think he gave it a couple of minutes to see if there was going to be a change in, in the way that the team was playing, and I don't think he saw that and said, okay, it's time to, time to freshen it up a little bit to, uh, to, put it, to change things up a little bit, and, uh, and we'll see where that goes. Knight getting his first touch on the right-hand side here for FC Edmonton. Finding Neil Laverty. Left-footed, he's switching play to the left flank. Nice pass to Mirabelli. Mirabelli trying to take on his man. There's no way around there, but he'll find Lang. Lang's near post cross, flicked on there. It took a deflection, and it's going to be a corner kick for FC Edmonton here. That looks like it bounced off about three heads. The top of uh, it looks like a skipping stone on the ocean there. The way that that uh, ball went across the players' heads off that cross. It looks like one, two. I thought there was a third, but uh, there's a couple of heads coming together there. A clearly corner kick there for the Eddies, and uh, again, not, not, they haven't really threatened on any of these set pieces so far in the game. So something they need to take advantage of. Changing it up a bit with Mirabelli for the in-swinger instead of Laverty, but he's uh, hit that one very low. It still might drop for a chance for Fordyce, charged down. Edmonton still in possession here. Laverty sending away Mirabelli again on the left-hand side. That's just a bit too firm for him to control, and the ball into touch. As a defender, sometimes the mishit corner is the worst one to defend. You get the one that comes in low, it's not what you're expecting. It bounces around in there, it hits some shins, it hits some people on the ankles. And you don't know where it's going to go. Uh, sometimes those are a little more effective. And I know I'm not trying to uh, advocate that you should miss hit your crosses, but sometimes those are more effective than the nicely floated ball in. Uh, they cause some havoc because no one really knows where they're going to go. Watson for the long sweeping ball to the left flank and trying to find Mirabelli, it's a good pass. Here is Mirabelli, he's in possession now for FC Edmonton. Sidesteps his man, puts in a good cross. Fordyce just can't get there. But that's what they're looking for from Mirabelli. Yeah, just be able to get deep. He's very good one-on-one. -on -one. He likes to take defenders on. He, he's got the matchup there uh, that they like. Uh, he's scoring up there against Ibarra. He has a chance to get that ball across. He can get deep, use that speed that he has, his ability to beat a player one-on-one, -on -one, and then get to a good position and get that ball across the face of goal. That Then Mirabelli is going to find a spot for himself and, you know, in this lineup. He's been in and out of this team, but that's what he's got to do. Use that ability and, 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 uh, and get to good places on the pitch. Rago has a throw in for FC Edmonton. Find Proctor. He just carries it forward a few yards and then toe pokes it to the edge of the area, but it's back with Minnesota. Malice brought down. Free kick given to Minnesota. Just rides the challenge there, but Laverty and Nurse both in a little bit too firmly. Free kick for Minnesota.
Pitch Collins trying to play it out to the left wing. Rago gets his head on the ball. Knight on the chest. There you go. Nice pass forward to Herzog. Edmonton lose it again. Another break by Minnesota here. Campos looking for the one two. Slight misunderstanding. And Parker will claim that one for the Eddies. Side Edmonton with Flaverty. That's a cross that's a little too deep. Van Oakel makes the play. And again, this is an example of really the most that Van Oakel's had to do all game long. Hasn't really had to stop a shot. Uh, basically, it's a lot of claims and maybe even not that many, winning a couple of corners, uh, punting a couple of balls out. But that's really been the, the brunt of. Matt Van Oakle's involvement in this game, and that's uh, an indictment on the Eddie's attack going forward. They're just not making the keeper work at all, not really making the defenders work like they need to. Need to have more movement. Proctor heading that ball away from the penalty area. Drops down for Franks. He's trying to thread that one through for Campos. Nurse has the ball. Uh, finds an easy pass to Rago. Forward to West Knight. Knight's looking for four dice down the line there, but Minnesota getting possession back with Tobin. Drilling one up the line that Rago battles to and wins, and it's Laverty. Antonio Rago again. Turned by Herzog, he might try the right foot shot, and that's the closest Edmonton have come, just missing the left-hand goalpost. It's, take, it's taken 58 minutes, but finally FC Edmonton carve out a really good scoring chance. Herzog with a turn here, fires it across the face of goal. Matt Van Opel dives, but he's happy to see that go wide of the post. But again, Edmonton needs more of that, just a quick pass in from Rago that Herzog's able to turn on and create a chance. But maybe again this is Edmonton needs some sustained pressure they need something to spark them going forward and maybe that just gives them a, a little bit of a lift Proctor coming across to cover in behind Rago it's a long ball forward by him Herzog is penalized for a push of course I I guess I would be sort of jinxing it by saying if Herzog hit the target the score would be 1-1 Just there, Diaz went down, and the whistle goes. It's a clash of heads between Mirabelli and Lance Lang, and the trainers will need to come on here. Both of them going for the same ball, and those uh, really hurt. And you can tell both players in a fair amount of discomfort, and that's uh, not nice to see. Yeah, they came at each other at a pretty great rate of speed, too. Um, they, uh, there, there was some velocity there. Lang coming forward, Mirabelli going back. Both had their eyes on the ball, and they both fired into each other, and they both went down. We hope both players are okay, but again, head injuries are something that you have to be very, very careful with. Remember, you can do your bit to fight hunger with the World Food Program. Feed a child for a month for only five dollars. You can text WFP Earth four five six seven eight. Yeah. Mirabelli's on his feet, it's good to see, and now Lance Lang up on his feet too. Well, a feature we're seeing from the development standpoint of FC Edmonton this uh, season is the youth programs that are both doing well for boys and for girls, and Coach Colin Miller, Colin Miller very pleased 
to see the progress there. Uh, anytime you're working with talented young players, Steve, there's a, a real enthusiasm about uh, about things, and and we thought that you know, well, Tom Fath certainly from day one has has uh, spoken about getting a women's program involved. Now we've got the staff in place that will look after both the, the boys and the girls coming through the system, and we're we're delighted. It's a very very exciting opportunity for these young players, and on the on the boys side, on the men's side of the club. The incentive is for them to reach the first team and uh, national team levels. Frank sweeping a ball wide to the left-hand side and not finding his man Diaz though. And Knight will allow that ball to run into touch. He has a throw in for the Eddies. Knight linking up with Rago. Antonio Rago's uh, given that one back. It's Ambersley. It's going to drop for Bracalello. There's the strike on goal, and it's gone right through Lance Parker. And that's a bit of a howler, and it's a second goal for Minnesota. That's one that Lance Parker is not going to want to see on the highlight reel at all. Uh, it's, it's a shot that goes right at him. I don't know if it takes maybe a bad bounce on him beforehand, but it looks like it goes right through him. He's diving out to get to this ball, and it just squeezes right underneath him, and that's... Uh, not not one he's going to be very pleased with and uh, it's one that puts the Eddies in now a, a, a critical hole at 2-0. I talked earlier about how I felt Minnesota on a couple occasions uh, gifted Edmonton some life by missing some clear-cut opportunities but there was one that I think FC Edmonton gave right back and now 2-0 down you got to throw men forward you got to take chances you need these three points. It would be a seven-point gap to the Cosmos now with a loss. And uh, you really need to go forward. Bracalello giving Minnesota a 2-0 advantage. Certainly uh, a very rare mistake by Lance Parker, but one that uh, we'll want to forget very quickly. That's, uh, that really did go right through him. At the other end, though, Edmonton have got themselves a corner. Chip towards the near post by Laverty, hacked away by the Minnesota defense. Four dices trying to win it back inside that penalty box, away by Malice, the scorer of the first goal. Campos beating Rago to a 50-50 challenge, but Lang is there covering. Lang seems back okay after that nasty clash of heads. Played a pass out to the right wing, but uh, everyone's composure just a little bit, taking a bit of a knock there and they've given up possession again. One thing I got to point out is I thought that Simone Bracalello handled that goal very, in a very classy manner. Uh, I, I think a player understands when they get a bit of a gift like that, and it was a, a fellow professional's mistake. And uh, when Bracalello, he made no big deal of the celebration. He almost was looked apologetic for scoring in that situation. Yes, you're happy you scored. It's what you need to do as a forward, and you have to take those chances sometimes. Just get it on goal, and sometimes good things happen. But at the same time, when you score a goal like that, you don't rub it in the other team's face. You don't you don't make a big show of it. You don't you don't run around like that. And I thought that was a very classy, very professional thing that Simone Bracalello did when he the way he handled that goal. Diaz chipping up the cross from the left hand side for Minnesota. That's driven away by Lang. Fordyce will chase it. Ball into touch for another throw in for Minnesota. 2 0 down, FC Edmonton. And only about 25 minutes left to play. Five 1 1 draws in a row prior to this match, and the way they were hoping that was cha would change would be by getting a win, not by losing. But Colin Miller's got quite a bit to think about here in the closing stages of this one. And you know, we can talk about the nature of the goals that Minnesota got the first goal, a good a good shot by Malice, but one that took a deflection in the second on a mistake by the keeper. But at the same time, on the run of play, they deserve the lead. They they have been the dominant team. They have pushed forward. They have done a lot of good things in possession. Edmonton really, other than one Corey Herzog chance that he's flashed wide. Uh, there really haven't been any real threatening attempts on goal and really no shots on goal for Matt Van Opel to save because Herzog's chance went wide. 
Herzog's long throw by drop for Mirabelli. Plays it back for Herzog. In comes the cross. It's low. Malice gets onto it. Rago driving one from long range. Good effort as well. And a very nice save by Van Ockel. Rago perhaps trying to make amends for his uh, misplaced pass that gave the ball to Bracalello that allowed him to shoot in the first place. Yeah, it was a, it was a good, good attempt. You just got to have a go sometimes. Really good save there by Matt Van Ockel. Got to it. Safe hands. Connor Tobin, long ball forward with the left foot. Rago reels that one in. And Laverty trying to release Herzog. He's running beautifully into the path of this one. He's got support from Knight. Takes a touch. That's Knight, returns it to Herzog. Crossing chance here from the right wing. Minnesota doing enough again, strong in defense. Rago heading this one down back to Proctor. Proctor's found Knight. Knight to Lang. Laverty takes up the play. Trying to put a cross in early, and it's deflected by Malice. Out for another throw to FC Edmonton. Fordyce flicks this one on. Pitch Colin getting a touch to it. Tobin clearing it. And again, Minnesota just getting first to the ball when they needed to. Malice using his hands to move that one along, and FC Edmonton do have the free kick this time. I think they're asking for a card because Malice is on the ground and he actually knows what he's doing here. Like you can see that he's he's pushing the ball away with his hand here once he hits the turf. This is the first challenge on Franks there, and then see the ball there. And yeah, he plays that away with his arm, and I think that's why they want the card there. That he's uh, it, it, it's a pitcher who's clearly playing that ball. With his arm. Mirabelli is being replaced by Anthony Adura here, another substitute for FC Edmonton. forward uh, where Mirabelli is a winger they're trying to just get some more numbers and, and, and playing players forward. Laverty's free kick flicked on there at the near post that was a dangerous one. Knight trying to win it back on the edge of the area. Full-blooded tackle but pitch colon wins and Iberos away. He's got a man to his left and one to the right but in the end he's going to drop for Parker. He's made a long throw past halfway to pick up Fordyce Ibera robbing him straight away though. And winning it back when Fordyce had lots of time. That's a good tackle by Chris Nurse. Wasn't the favorite to get that ball, but he's done it. And he's found Anthony Adur. In towards the penalty area, looking for a free kick perhaps. Referee waves it away. Not really any strong appeals either from FC Edmonton. No, not there. at all. Adura goes down, he got back up, got on with it. And no, no one was really looking forward towards the ref though. And again, Matt Van Ogle easily can gather up the ball, kill a few seconds and look just to beat the ball down the field. Into the last 20 minutes, FC Edmonton trailing by two goals to nil. Simone Bracalello and Callum Malice on the score sheet. Minnesota. Look of frustration there from Colin Miller as his team try and play it down that right wing. Watson has given it away. It's gone straight into touch. Throw in for Minnesota. You look at frustration over a bad pass, and unfortunately, again, Something we've seen a lot of from FC Edmonton players, that look of frustration after a pass goes astray or goes awry or something just doesn't work, there's a lack of communication and uh, just players having a real hard time linking those passes up and linking play that uh, Minnesota's done a good job of, of, of being able to take away some space and being able to soak up the pressure. 
And ball, I think, against Anthony Adur this time. And Rago's rebounded pass. Definitely not the best home performance that we've seen this no, season. And you really, you really feel uh, that the, that second goal, the, the 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 one that went through Lance Parker off the foot of Simone Bracciolo, really taking the air out of the stadium. There was still some life, still some still some feeling from the support that can make that one goal back. But this is a team that struggled to score multiple goals all season long. Well, the last time I think they did score more than one goal in the game was against Minnesota in the spring season. And we got three on the final day. They'll need three now. Good interception by Lance Lang. And winning a free kick. They're trying to take it quickly, but the referee trying to slow things down and calm people's emotions here. what the free kick was for. And the second challenge there. That was really the first sort of really instance we've seen of the team sort of being in each other's faces. And you know, over the last few weeks, we've seen some incidents here uh, where there has been some real heated incident, uh, some real blood boiling between the two teams. Maybe today we haven't seen that. Maybe that's part of the problem. There's just a lot of nicety going on. Um, these teams have a healthy respect for each other. and. Uh, Maybe in this case, a little bit, maybe too much respect on Edmonton's part. And uh, I mean, some of that fire isn't there that we've seen in previous weeks against uh, teams that, let's say, they have more of a, a rivalry with. Drago finding Proctor. Proctor chipping this one up, right footed, looking for that run over the top by Anthony Adua. It's going to be a goal kick. Adura is trying to make something happen there, just trying to put some pressure on Diaz, trying to force a miss kick, trying to force something, trying to change the, the way of this game. And uh, but no, no, no luck and nothing going his way. Diaz's shot just bounces off his face for another goal kick from Matt Van Ockel. Campos getting ahead on that one. Ibera chasing on the right wing. Feeds Ambersley. Ambers lead to Campos, nice one too, good passing this, Malice lets it run. Bracolello again, trying to tee up the shot. And perhaps just uh, one touch too many when just blasting it towards goal might have worked there. It's almost like they wanted to pass that one into the net. Yeah, like almost they were looking for the perfect opportunity there. Maybe Bracolello has a better opportunity. Pitch Colin doing well to turn and check and find the pass. Nurse winning it back for FC Edmonton now. Proctor finds Rago. Chris Nurse. Good step away from his marker and finds Lang. Lang's cross is going to be Deflected and then picked up by Ibera. They will concede the corner. He'll avoid that, but it's a throw in. <laughs> Lang's going to take the throw and look for four dice and will now get the corner for FC Edmonton. Let's see what kind of numbers Edmonton commits forward. They're running out of time. They need to get some goals. It almost doesn't matter if you give up the third now on a break. And yeah, we only see Antonio Rago as the only man back. And Lang is now pulling back a little bit. Gotta get men forward. Gotta make some of these set pieces play. Hey, at least get them towards goal. Lavatiz put it towards Adur. He got his head on it. And so did Diaz, I think, because it's gone out for another corner kick. Colin Miller hoping his team can... Sneak back into the match here with another corner. Lavity's ball up to the far post, and good job by Van Ockel just to get a fist on it. And Malice has possession, and keep it nicely. Here's Campos. And Bracolello, he's got a bearer chasing through the middle. He's trying to find him, he's offside. He's offside. Flags up, and the whistle is gone. And FC Edmonton has the ball. Don't forget Fox Football Daily. You can get up to the minute news, highlights, features, and analysis. Fox Football Daily, a one hour show hosted by.
Fox NFL Sunday broadcaster Kurt Menefee. And there's analysis and opinion from some of the biggest names ever to play the game. Well, FC Edmonton just struggling to make anything happen at the moment, approaching the last 10 minutes. And this has been a struggle for the Eddies today. It really has been a, a performance where uh, you really have failed to see them be able to put passes together, be able to hold the ball in dangerous places, be able to keep possession, uh, they've given up the ball a lot, and uh, there have been mistakes all over the pitch, uh, right from the goalkeeper out. And uh, really, uh, Minnesota is taking advantage of what Edmonton has, has truly given to them today. And uh, I think Manny Lagos has got to be very, very pleased uh, to go lead on the road, 15 minutes to go. And uh, right now, there's nothing real threatening coming toward from out of Edmonton right now. There's no push right now to even try to get that to a close game, to get it to 2-1, and maybe put uh, Minnesota under some pressure. It just isn't any sustained pressure in, in Minnesota's end. Minnesota's able to, to keep the ball at Edmonton's end, where they're just in no trouble whatsoever. It's comfortable for them. Malice is in trouble this time. He was the man that handballed it moments ago, and now he takes Knight from behind, and that is a yellow card for the scorer of Minnesota's first goal. And you can see here, definitely uh, no question about that one. And, you know, that's, it's, in a way, it's good, though, for West Knight to get that first challenge out of the way. He's been training with the team for weeks, but to be actually be in a game situation, first game coming back since breaking that foot, that it's good to get that first challenge to realize you're okay, you're going to survive it, uh, that uh, you bounce through the first real rough challenge that you had. I do it, getting ahead on that one. Herzog in the penalty area. The whistle is gone. They've got the ball in the net. It won't count. Herzog has to trudge back for the free kick to be taken. His team trailing 2 0. So we heard the whistle go long before uh, Herzog made that turn, so it wasn't as if uh, there was a situation where there was anything close there. Matt Van Oakle had already heard the whistle, he knew that play was dead. Uh, Minnesota players were already moving away to other positions as Herzog was tucking that ball in. So. Edge of Edmonton's penalty area again. Rago playing it out to the right-hand wing, looking for Knight. He won't get to that. It's a throw-in for Minnesota. Diaz down the line. Rago getting his head on it. Watson clearing the ball up the line, but again... Comes straight back from Minnesota. And Knight gets his foot on it. Nice ball with the outside of the right boot into the path of Lang. He might have run this one a bit too far. He's kept it in. Early cross. Will they get a corner out of it? Ibarra clearing it. Watson will get the ball back for Edmonton. That's a good cross field pass. Knight again. Knight's early cross to the far post, headed away by Coleman. Laverty's got it back. Rago making several passes up that right hand side. Now takes a stride forward, slips it in towards Herzog. Good defensive job there. High pitch goal and Herzog trying to win it back again, but Diaz playing it forward to Campos. Got Malice supporting him. Now Ambersley. Ambersley back for Malice again. It's good passing from Minnesota. Bracalello now. And they look very comfortable out there with this tuna lead. Oh, but that's a bad mistake. And it's Herzog running onto it. Adur's in space. Anthony Adur onto his right foot. The shot's charged down. Herzog has the ball back. He's trying to play in Neil Haverty. But that, frustratingly, comes to an end again. 
the Bulls in touch. Again, you have two, two center halves from Minnesota recognizing the giveaway, backing in, making sure there's no shooting angles, and, and taking it all away from Anthony Adur and Corey Herzog as they're coming up the field. Some very good organization there by Minnesota, recognizing that there's a problem on the giveaway, getting back, shutting down the gaps in front of Matt, Matt Van Opel, and really strangling that chance before it could become one. And uh, Anthony Adur's shot bounces harmlessly off a defender. And again, it comes to recognition. They recognized there was a problem. As soon as that ball was passed back, that was going to be a giveaway. They got in the good spaces. They didn't try to overcommit or over challenge. They fell back, recognized where was the good hill to defend, which is where you find a spot, you get back to it, and then you say, okay, this is where they're going to come at us, and this is where we're going to cut them off. They did a great job. Time running down for FC Edmonton. We played 82 minutes, and Ibera putting pressure on Lang, and look at that, the forwards putting pressure on the Eddie's defenders, and Minnesota have done that all game long, and just not made it easy for Edmonton to settle on the ball. They've got it here, though, with Herzog. He's got Knight to his right. Fordyce is the man at the far post. Knight got a chance to cut it back into the path of Adua. Rago arriving, Rago's cross up to the far post is going to be caught easily by Van Oakel. Again, a fairly comfortable catch for the keeper and an easy rollout. And once again, Minnesota breaks what little pressure Edmonton can bring forward and gets out of jail very, very easily. Ibera is trying to just sneak in behind Lang, but Lang gets a touch to Parker. Some of the fans from the stadium have seen enough. They're uh, starting to leave. Frustrating home performance by FC Edmonton. Knowing that at the beginning of this match, both teams will level on eight points, and Minnesota are going to leapfrog quite a few spaces in the league, and the Eddies time running out for them. But it's Fordyce again. Fordyce to the edge of the penalty area. Pitch Colon takes it away from Laverty. Plays that one at the line, and Lang has to concede the throw. And it's amazing how the language is going to change with the five draws before this. Before before this game, we're going to be saying Edmonton undefeated in six, Edmonton undefeated in six. And tomorrow, people are going to be saying Edmonton winless in six. And that's going to be the change of language with this kind of loss. People are going to talk about only five points in the last six games, uh, not that there was an undefeated streak that, uh, that went down. Sean Seiko is going to get a run out here the last six minutes, replacing Neil Laverty. In time, Minnesota got a player down there. It's Franks receiving a bit of treatment, and the referee will add some time on at the end of the 90 minutes for this. And for the next home game is two weeks from today, Carolina Railhawks. October the 6th, you can still get tickets from fcedmonton.com. Manny Lagos, the Minnesota coach on the sidelines there, just uh, final pep talk the last few minutes for his team here. Franks has got to come off and uh, put his left boot back on. And assuming that this, this the result doesn't change, that uh, Edmonton does drop this decision. There is, uh, you look at, there's seven points now behind the New York Cosmos and six behind the Tampa Bay Rowdies at the top of the, who are at the top of the table. So with one game left against both of those team teams, they have to win both. They, they're going to need to take three points somehow in New York uh, later this season. And they're also going to have to, when Tampa Bay comes here, get maximum points. West Knight burst towards goal, the six-yard area, and has won a corner kick for FC Edmonton. Seiko has gone over to take it. No time to waste here. They're throwing everyone forward for this. He plays it short. He spotted Rago coming up from the back. Back for Seiko. Changes the angle a bit. Nice cross to the far post, and Nurse had the shooting chance, but lifts it high. Yeah, it's... Uh... Nurse is, uh, Chris Nurse is going away from goal there, as, as was Albert Watson with the uh, play across from the back of the box when he played the ball back across to Chris Nurse. And that makes it a very difficult uh, chance to get the ball on target. Going away from goal, you're leaning backwards, and you're just going to get under that ball like he did in Skyet. 
Van Oakle kicking off the floor. He's got good distance on that one. Deep inside the Edmonton half, and Bracalello takes a touch. Supported by Ambersley. Ambersley on that left wing. Now Diaz. Diaz to Malice. Back for Diaz. They're controlling the play well, Minnesota. Campos beaten in the air by Watson. It drops for Bracalello. Ambersley keeps it in the midfield. Malice to Diaz. Campos turns. Puts it onto his right foot. He's harried from behind by two players. He's still got possession. Now it's Ibera. He's just run that too far. It's going to be a throw in for FC Edmonton. Two nil the lead for Minnesota. Three minutes of normal time. Really an, an efficient afternoon for Minnesota. You know, never really put under real threat. They get they get a goal in each half. They take advantage of what's given to them, and really uh, a road trip in NASL that. Uh, Edmonton played very hospitable hosts today for, the, for their rivals, Minnesota United, and uh, really a tidy effort by Minnesota today. Well, good to see Wes Knight back for FC Edmonton. It's been a good run out for him. He's added some balance on that right-hand side, ridden a couple of challenges. But overall, a day that's been uh, disappointing for the home fans. A couple of minutes left with Lang on the ball. He's tried to find Seiko with the ball over the top. Might drop for Knight. Just wouldn't fall for him before he could get the cross in, but he's done well to get around the back. And it's a good ball up to the far post. Seiko's in there. Flashes by everyone in the end. But again, even, even down two goals, and even when you have to roll the dice, just weren't enough men in the box. The cross came in, Sean Seiko's the only one in the middle of the area. There's no one at the far post, there's no one to take that cross. And the Minnesota, the, the blue, the sky blue jerseys are badly outnumbering the black jerseys. And, and really the guys in black have nothing to lose. They gotta go forward. They gotta throw men forward. They gotta try to maybe make this 2-1 and then hope for something to happen in injury time. Stranger things have happened. There was a game in Fort, against Fort Lauderdale last year where they were down 2-0 at about this time and actually got a draw. They have to draw from experiences like that and say, look, we've got to take those chances. It's not going to matter right now, 2-0 or 3-0. We've got to go forward and try to get that next one. And that means committing men forward, and it's not doing it right now. Seiko making a break into the penalty area. Nice bit of skill, clipping it over the defender and then trying to run onto it. He's got a corner for FC Edmonton. Knight's going to take it. He's in that position anyway to save time. There'll be four minutes of time added on after the 90. Knight's ball might drop in the box there and perhaps get another chance to cross from the right wing. Plays the 1 2, nicely done. In comes the cut back here. Headed away again by Minnesota. Just that final delivery lacking again. And we have played. 90 minutes now at this point. Four minutes added on for FC Edmonton to try and salvage something here. Let's try to get something to build towards next week. Uh, try to get something to feel good about. Uh, this has been a frustrating day going forward and uh, a lot of things just haven't worked, haven't clicked. and. You, maybe if you get something, even if you make it 2-1, where you say, okay, we did something that was okay, something worked out at the end, that uh, that you can go into training and say we have something to build on. Across from Knight, a lot of those balls have been cleared by the first defender, but Rago this time gets it to the far post. Fordyce heading it back into the danger zone. But again, Minnesota standing firm at the back. Watson. Slides a pass to Seiko. Seiko trying to chip this one over the top. 
Drops to Ambersley. Alan Malice flicking a header on. Rago taking the ball back. And Proctor now finding Lance Lang. Lang's left-footed pass over the top is going to run through to Matt Van Okel. Can hear in the atmosphere at the stadium just uh, people a little bit fatigued by this today yeah it's uh, it's one of those performances that it's 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 hard to keep your energy level if you're a fan i mean minnesota's just had the bulk of the play going forward edmonton really haven't created enough scoring chances where you've got that real expectation that something's going to happen and then of course uh, with the goals given up and the second one where the keeper makes the mistake that, that puts you really behind the eight ball. And you know, the fans aren't dumb. They they know this team hasn't scored more than one goal in a game since the spring season. So they're gonna say, wow, for this team, when they give up two, is that an insurmountable lead uh, for, for Minnesota? Considering that this team has been one goal for each of the last six weeks and uh, still averages scoring less than a goal a game. And that, that might take, take a hit if they get the clean sheet today as Minnesota. So. You know, the fans know the score. They, they know where this team's at. And they know the, the, the struggles this team has had to score goals. But it's been it's been especially evident today that going forward, the, the struggles of the team. Because today they, they haven't even created that threat for the, the really the one goal. There's been Rago's one chance from distance, and, and Herzog put up the shot wide. Well, we're in the dying minutes here at Clark Stadium. Lang is switching play to the right flank again. Knight and Rago making the overlapping run. Adua finds Rago. Knight gets the ball back and pushes it down the line. That won't find Adua. Trying to win it back on that far side of the stadium and they've got a throw in. Rago with a chance to cross from the right-hand side, and Fordyce gets there and scores for FC Edmonton. Left-footed volley in injury time has hauled FC Edmonton back into this. Fordyce with a goal from nothing. It was a goal from nothing. Just the cross has pumped in there, I believe. And, and, and uh, Fordyce just gets it. Looks like is it pitch Colin that falls down? There is a Tobin, the defender that falls down. Looks like Tobin falls down there, and Fordyce has a you know left-footed chance. And he just slides in. Fordyce giving Edmonton something right at the death. Two won the score, and the atmosphere. Lifts a little bit for the home crowd. Another stoppage in play. It's a free kick to Minnesota. Diaz strokes it forward. Campos gets his head on it. And that literally was about the last kick of the match for Daryl Fordyce. So 2-1, Colin Miller and Manny Lagos shake hands. It's a victory for Minnesota. Yeah, it's a... Uh, uh, Edmonton gets the consolation at the end and uh, they get a little something to take out of the game with Fordyce's goal there. And yeah, Tobin did fall down. But the unfortunate thing now is people are going to look at Lance Parker's mistake as being the thing that was the difference in the game. Let's take a look back at the highlights. Brought to you by Cap City Landscaping. The grass is greener. Here's the first half shot from Callum Malice. Took a deflection. No chance for Parker that time. But this one is one he'll want to forget. Long range effort that just somehow very uncharacteristically too goes right through it. Goes right through the arms, dives out to get it, goes through the arms, through the legs and out. And uh, Fordyce, the late goal off the cross, which I think we'll have a look at in a second. Wes Knight, just a little touch for Rago. 
whips up the cross. It's right into the path of Fordyce. The defender slips, and he buries it. But a defeat for FC Edmonton. 2-1 loss to Minnesota.